You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 127, the April 28th Chris and Justin Dental Business Update. In this episode, Chris and Justin are back to discuss PPP forgiveness. How do we keep track of our expenses that will be forgiven through the PPP? What has the SBA changed in the last week? And will the PPP forgiveness window change and what does it mean if it does? We'll bring you everything you need to know about the dental business world and the PPP this week on The Dental Guys. Looking for a lab that understands the bridge between art and science? Check out the Dental Crafters Network. Dental Crafters, one relationship, infinite possibilities. Contact them at 1-800-472-8302 or at dentalcrafters.net. Do you want to learn to predictably place and restore dental implants using the most modern science and technology? We are talking 60 hours of CE in a comprehensive curriculum and live surgical implant placement on pre-selected patients. Head over to RestorativeDrivenImplants.com to learn more today. This is Justin Goodbrand and here is today's tip. Hey guys, it's Justin Goodbrand here with Financially Simple. The next legal aspect we're going to look at that helps mitigate risk are contracts. You know, we enter into contracts every day and many times we don't even know we're doing so. I'm sure you have contracts with your patients, your vendors, and your team members. If not, you're at risk. But let's think further, what would happen in the event of your death? Is there a continuation agreement? Is there a buy-sell agreement in place? What about a business disaster plan? Are you and your employees protected from litigation? Legal risk management is so important. This is why I recommend hiring a razor sharp attorney or general counsel. Think of it this way. The more protected your practice is, the more enticing it will be for potential buyers in the future. Now look, if you have any questions on how to increase the value of your practice or how to potentially double your net worth every three to five years, reach out to us via financiallysimple.com forward slash dentist and we'll be more than happy to help you. For more information about today's topic and other dental related topics, head over to financiallysimple.com forward slash dentist. Until next time, make it a great day. This tip is for informational purposes only. Please speak with a competent financial advisor regarding your specific needs. Justin Goodbread is a registered investment advisor with Heritage Investors. Visit heritageinvestor.com financiallysimple.com for additional information. And welcome to this episode of The Dental Guys. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And I'm John, The Dental Guy. And we are back again for our, what has become a really- Dollar bills, y'all. Dollar bills. (laughs) (laughs) How you going to spend those dollar bills? You've been been holding out on me, man. That's awesome. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I've been waiting for that all hey, week. You know, I can tell. Yeah. Th- how are you liking this fun. little 80s, 80s synth music, right? Little well, shout you kind of said to, earlier. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, man. You said little earlier. Little shout out to one of John and I's favorite shows of all times, yeah. Stranger Things. Now, if you also know that John and I like 80s, like nostalgia, because we grew up in the midst of the 80s, G.I. Joe, all that stuff. And when Stranger yeah. Things came out, it was like reliving my life in the 80s from a standpoint yeah. of like the malls, the music, the way things look, the clothes, all that kind of stuff. And I know my dad Ride and I your just bike really, everywhere. Yeah, 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 we had yeah. the bike club, the Cobra Bike Club. And you know, you remember yeah, the man. jail like stuff that you could put on shirts, right? Like you could actually, oh, of course. It was like, right. So guess what we did is we came up with the Cobra bike club. My friend drew this picture. He was a pretty good artist of a Cobra, right? Because I mean, you know, nice. Cobra commander and all that kind of stuff. And we actually like made those puff paint shirts <laughs> for our nice. bike club. So you guys were like the sons of anarchy, except oh. kids in the eighties. Yeah. You want to go but mud hardcore, and, right? You want to go yeah. mud and you call mudding up Ben bike. and David and you say, hey, man, let's go mud and it just rained and you go hit <laughs> the puddles like none other. So oh, yeah. today, oh, yeah. though, we were today. We, we had a group today yeah. though, yeah. We're, we're talking bringing, about. We're, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we're, we're back to the We're back to the business side. You know, we, we've had a great, I think, mix over the last couple of uh, weeks here. Some good clinical stuff along with kind of keeping you up with regulatory things and business things and. You know, this has our, been our weekly thing here with Justin and Chris. Let's bring them back in to the uh, show here. Justin Goodbread of FinanciallySimple.com and Chris Mahan of Mahan Associates. Welcome back, guys. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> How's it going? And you know what everybody's going to say if they're watching this live stream. They're going to notice something 
The same what thing I noticed. What is going on? It's, <laughs> it's first in the lower left of your screen. You will notice there's, uh, well, no, I was talking about Justin first, but Chris is oh, also. Oh, sorry. I mean, wait they, a minute. Let- it's almost like they got a memo, like it's it's loud shirt day and they both will wait in on it. So what what in, I first need to understand what inspired Justin because Chris is I could see you know you could you you could take that business or casual Justin though what happened man what what, uh, what happened dude I feel like I have lived in Groundhog Day for the last eight weeks every day I wake up and the very first thing I hear about is PPP or idle the very last thing I hear is PPP or idle I literally walked out of my house yesterday morning walked into the office and I was like Bill Murray Ned Ned Flander I mean I was sitting there ready to punch him in the eyeballs I'm like I gotta change something right I gotta do something different yeah. so I went to the closet this morning got the wildest shirt that I had hanging up on the rack which just is my Uncle Eddie shirt that I wear every Christmas to harass my nephews Love my it. niece my mom and my everybody else I threw it on walked in and everybody's died laughing so now it's what I'm trying so to good. do something now, Justin, just introduce so your. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> introduce ahead, yourself, Justin. who you are, and what you do, because yeah. we have some new watchers uh, to the show since you've been on. And uh, tell us who you are and what you do, and then we'll go to Chris. <laughs> Sure, sure. I'm Justin Goodbread. I'm a certified financial planner, certified exit planning advisor, and certified value growth advisor. I own three companies. I'm a business guy, and we advise business owners, mm-hmm. mostly dentists and entrepreneur doctors nationally, on how to. what I like to do is how to help business owners double their net worth every three to five years. That's what our team here does. We have a group of rock star advisors across the country in multiple office locations that is dedicated to helping business owners double their net worth every three to five years. And as you guys know, if you've been listening to the show for a while, Justin is a sponsor of the Dental Guys, and we appreciate his sponsorship over the past 18 months to two years. I think it's going on uh, this year will be our <coughs> second full year. of, And so he gives a little simple tip uh, during the main show release that you'll hear on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, those type of things on your podcatcher and on YouTube. So thank you, Justin, for sponsoring the Dental Guys. Chris Mahan. Who are you and what do you do? And tell us a little bit about your shirt. (laughs) Well, hey, guys, glad to join you again. Um, I'm Chris Mahan with Mahan and Associates, and we provide uh, business services to healthcare healthcare practices, dental, medical, et cetera. Everything that has a dollar bill associated with it from financials and write-up services, preparation of financial statements, tax planning, practice consulting, practice management, and we really tie it all together. It's really coordination of care, just like in healthcare and in dental, where you can get a better outcome for your patient or our clients. Uh, work with uh, people like Justin to really coordinate a comprehensive plan where they're doubling their net value, their net their uh, net worth every three years. You know, working with Justin and our side of it is really taking the tax code and making it a wealth accumulation model um, and playing the game the right way uh, to keep as much money as possible in addition to assisting them in top of the line revenue growth and practice management and operations enhancement. So we do everything on the business side for healthcare practitioners and taxes um, and pension administration. That being said, I'm a Tommy Bahama fan. Uh, we've got a here at Opry Mills, we have a Tommy Bahama outlet mall and I seriously have a problem. I, I think I need to go get some help because, you know, they'll give me, they'll give me the call and say it's friends and family weekend. I'll come in and I got the specials and, Somehow I just I open my eyes and I'm in the store and I'm spending money and <laughs> there you go. It was hey. Tommy Bahama Day, you know. So good. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, you know, I think we should bring up the fact that as we're kind of doing these introductions, <clears throat> if we go back over the last weeks, if you listened to what these two guys told you and the advice that they kind of told you to look into, and obviously they always said it's individualized, right? We, we They couldn't give you everything that they gave you some ideas. It's interesting to track back and see just how exactly right that they've been despite a lot of other uh, people that have gotten a lot of this wrong from a business standpoint of what what we needed to be doing, what we needed to be thinking about, and especially the timing. And I think that brings us right to kind of where we are today. So now a lot of people have either received those PPP loans or are in the process, or maybe they've already had those for you know, a few weeks if the timing was what it was. Um, And the big question now becomes, I think for many people, what do we do with the money? And I think that probably we'd like to talk about what should we do with it? And then what should we definitely not do with it? So maybe we should talk first, Justin, let's go to you. 
and talk about what are some of the things that you're recommending people think about doing with this money. Chris, have you weigh in on the same thing? And then we can kind of go around the horn with, you know, what should we not be doing and what should be kind of, we be looking out for uh, in, the, in the next few weeks? So the way I would approach that answer is you have to understand, first of all, how the terms of the loan works, understand and familiarize yourself, number one, with the forgiveness allocation. Um, so there's two different types of rules here. We have the forgiveness for those individuals who have employees that may be an S corporation, a, a partnership entity. And then you have a different set of forgiveness rules with your solopreneurs or your Schedule C entities. So I think if we dive into that first, John, if I put a blanket across the whole thing, I'd say, don't spend it yet until you know the rules. Because understanding the rules, John, mm -hmm. is going to dive into um, the rest of the conversation. So if I may, Chris, let me handle the, if you have employees and then you jump over to the uh, W2, I'm sorry, the Schedule C um, type of tax returns here. So for those individuals who happen to have an S corporation or a partnership, like an LLC tax as a partnership or an LLC tax as, a, as an S corporation, and you're not a solopreneur in this particular position, or you're not filing a Schedule C, you have to understand there's basically three things that are going to give us forgiveness. Despite what the rule says, I actually read the 800 some odd page rule. They actually, no one's making mention of one thing, which was, was interest on all debts. They haven't put that with the SBA guidance, but here's what definitively we have today. And it still leaves a lot to be questioned um, with the guidance that we will get between now and hopefully next week with the SBA's guidance coming out. So the first thing is, is that the majority, 75% of the money that you receive, if you're going to maximize forgiveness, has to go to payroll. It has to go to payroll and you can't pay yourself all this money. You're actually maxed out at about $15,500 is what the doctor or highly compensated employee, those doctors who receive more than $100,000 a year, you're actually maxed out over the next eight weeks on about $15,500. A little bit more than that, depending on how, we, how you want to calculate it. But the majority of the money has to go to payroll. So what is payroll? According to the rules, and I'm going to read this exactly from the screen, it is salaries, wages, commissions, or similar compensations for partnerships, S corporations, things of that nature. We're also dealing with cash tips. Now, that really doesn't affect many dental offices. That's more designed for the hospitality, hospitality industry. But it also, though, includes those pay, uh, vacation, parental, family, medical, or sick leave. It deals with a dismissal or separation. So if you need to pay somebody a severance, that can include as part of the payroll. It uh, provides provisions. So in addition to just the regular salary, the gross compensation, you also can add group health insurance, including the premiums that the company pays. You can also deal with, and here's what the rule says, any retirement benefit that's paid for by the company. So that'd be your safe harbor provisions. That'd be your profit sharing, your cash balance, your money purchase, your uh, compensation. I'm sorry, your, your, your matches on your simples or your SEPs, things of that nature that the company pays on behalf of the benefit of the employees and is payment of state and local taxes assessed on the compensation of the employees. So that is payroll. Payroll has to be 75% of the money. And the way you look at it is basically what's going to be filed on the clients on the on your team's W-2. That's going to be the easiest way to define that. But we can also add to that forgiveness. We can also add, and this is where it gets kind of the, the, the separation happens between a Schedule C and an LLC tax as a partnership or S corporation or C or whatever it may be. You can add to that forgiveness the utilities. OK, utilities being power, water, sewer, things of that nature that you pay on a normal course of business. And you can add to that any mortgage interest. So the amortization table on your mortgage, if you own your own building that your practice is in, you can uh, deduct your interest portion. Or, I'm sorry, have your interest portion forgiven or you can have your rent forgiven. So there's three major categories for most people who have employees that are not filing as a Schedule C. And that is payroll, number one, number two, utilities, and number three, rent or your mortgage interest. So if we understand that, what, what, what is able to be forgiven on that side, and then Chris goes, if you will go over Schedule C, then John, we can dive into the other things we have to be cognizant of being these are the rules that we have to follow. Yeah, go so, ahead, Chris. Chris take it, take it from there on the Schedule C. Sure, on the Schedule C, um, it's it's primarily the same. Um, again, you get owner's compensation replacement. So whatever your uh, <clears throat> your the bottom line of your Schedule C for 2019, 
that is your profit up to $100,000 is where you're capped on the uh, employer benefit side of it. Employee payroll cost, uh, mortgage interest payments, and that's uh, but it's not prepayments or payments on the principal. And that can be for real or personal property. So that can be for on your equipment loans. It even mentions on your auto loan. Um, you have utilities, which of course that's pretty self-evident, uh, gas, electric, water. It also says gas you use driving your business vehicle. Um, this is what I'm reading right here. Um, so you can util utilize it on all those options, which is basically utilities, uh, debt service, interest payments, and uh, payroll, and that hundred thousand dollar cap on the on the Schedule C that they they've capped uh, the sole proprietor the Schedule C's at. Which you know, Justin, I'll throw this kind of back to you because you know I know we've done this collaboratively, and I appreciate us all sharing what we know. But it's my understanding that health insurance and pension contributions in S corps partnerships employer portions could be calculated in that, but not on sole proprietors. Is that your understanding? Yeah, that's my understanding. So let me see if I can say that differently. For the S corporations partnerships, you have your salary wage for your for the doc at fifteen thousand, basically fifteen thousand five hundred. I think it's fifteen thousand seven hundred dollars, something like that. Um, you, to know the exact number, guys, take a hundred thousand divided by fifty two, multiply by eight, and that gives you the exact number. And I should have done that. It's but fifteen thousand like three hundred eighty four dollars and fifty six cents. There we go. I knew the CPA, the bean <laughs> counter would have that, right? That's right. <laughs> so that's the, on, a, on a partnership, you have that as your baseline, but you can buck on top of that. You can add on top of that your 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 401k contribution that the company pays, your health insurance, et cetera. On a Schedule C, the way my guidance that I'm reading and what I'm consistently hearing from the bankers is you can't add on top of that baseline 100%. number for your employee benefit benefits for your health care, things of that nature. So that's where the variation moves between depending on how you're taxed. The other thing we got to keep in mind is I said it at the beginning, 75% of the loan has to go to our payroll. It's designed to go to payroll, which means that to take and, and pay for those things, which Chris mentioned out of the remaining 25%, it can't exceed 25%. So you can't go in and say, Hey, I got a hundred thousand dollars. I'm going to pay 40,000 to rent. I'm going to pay 60,000 to rent utility. It won't work that way. So you, you've got to mm -hmm. keep 75% of the money going to payroll yourself included, but more importantly to get your team back in place. Now, what about with the rent? You know, this is something that's coming up a mm -hmm. lot. And one of our listeners asked this question. If you are a building owner <clears throat> and you also own the practice and you have the building, you know, held in a separate real estate entity, the rent that you're paying to that real estate entity, is that something that can be uh, forgivable? Is, is there any limitation on that? Chris, you want to tackle that one? Yeah, to my to my knowledge, I haven't seen any guidance that says that it's not because it's a separate legal entity. Um, you know, the, the only side of it, and I know Justin spoke to this earlier on the pre-show conversation, is you will pick that up as income on your LLC or your your real estate entity, and you won't get to deduct that out of the PPP money. So, um, you know, again, it's still free money, so that's good. Um, but yeah, it's my understanding to be more specific that yes, you can util totally utilize that as um, a qualified expense. And you yeah, guys where I would add, kind of where I would add to too. that, though, John, where I would add yeah. to that is the rule is very is very defined. Okay, and this is where guys, if you want to track anything from this point forward and try to get some guidance, it's around this particular language that says that the that and I'm going to read this directly from the rule itself. It has to be cost incurred and payments made. That is the hangup. That's the majority, the largest hangup in the guidance that we're waiting for. So go back to that question. If you do own your own building and in a separate entity and your practice is renting it, then that rent is paid to that separate entity is forgivable to my knowledge today. I haven't seen any clear guidance on that. I would agree with Chris. Here's where it's going to get tricky, guys, is that let's say that you get the money May 1st. And now we're dealing with May, June, and May and June. <clears throat> Basically, let's keep it simple. Okay. You're not going to be able to take, according to the strict 
interpretation of the rules. You're not going to be able to go backwards and back pay, pay, pay rents or payroll backwards past May 1st and have it count because it didn't incur in that time frame. Nor whenever you get to the end of the cycle, the payments have to be made. So you're not going to be able to pay out bonuses way into the future underneath the strict interpretation of the rules, way into the future and count that. They have to be both cost incurred and payments mm-hmm. made. Now, where the AICPA is arguing right now that I'm watching with the SBA is they're saying, well, time out. We could argue the fact that payroll, which came in on four days after we actually got the loan, that's a liability in that particular time frame. Even they can say, we basically say we're liable at that point. Therefore it's incurred. I don't think the SBA is going to buy that personal opinion. Chris, you may have a different opinion on that, but I think the SBA is going to hold the strictest terms here possible. It says cost incurred and pay, which means you may have to adjust some of the ways you do your billing. I'm sorry, your payments, the way you categorize things, the minute you turn that faucet on to use those eight week numbers. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. I think that, uh, you know, on all the calculations you see, that even on defined benefit contributions and qualified pension plan contributions that you can make payments to, um, they're taking the annual expense, dividing it by 52 and multiplying it by eight. So they've, they've got this pretty tight in terms of how you can use it. And I know there's a lot of different you know ideas out there. Can I prepay my employees for two months and that kind of thing? They're really, like Justin was, say, I like what Justin was saying, is they're going to really hold you to more of an accrual basis. Um, Mm. in terms of these expenses that you incur. And it has to be to support the ongoing operations of the business, not for expansion. So all that being said, they're making sure that people are using this, that need it, and people, and that you're using it for things in that time period that you would otherwise had in the usual and customary process of doing business during that time. Um, Gotcha. So, you know, one of the things, you know, that we do at the end of the year sometimes is typically have a week lag on payroll, well, we'll be playing with those payroll dates sometimes. You know, we'll say, okay, we're going to elim- eliminate the week lag if it comes on the fence of that eight week period to make sure we get mm-hmm. it in there. Because here's the deal right now, the banks are underwriting it and they're all doing it a bunch of different ways and have a lot of different requirements. I've worked with so many banks and had so it's, oh my God, I can't wait for a vacation, right? <laughs> they're also going to be the ones calculating the forgiveness provisions. So you want this tight, you want this money set in a separate bank account. You want your payroll journal, your payroll journal calculated where you have your gross wages, and that's going to be option one. If you've got a hundred thousand, you better earmark seventy-five thousand dollars and say that's got to go for payroll and track it week by week by week by week and pay it. Pay your rent. You can't come in and pay five months rent, like Justin was saying. This is gonna be a cruel basis, and they're gonna, you know, they're coming in to help out businesses, but they're not they're but they're not um going to let people take it to, the, to you know to a major extent. So mm. And that's interesting because, you know, I just want to maybe bring this up one more time that a few weeks ago, there was a major uh, accounting firm that was that specifically said in a webinar, this is really not going to be audited. This is not going to be looked at very carefully. This is something where you just need to go in there and just go for it. You know, if you need to prepay things, prepay it. Uh, Mm. There's just really not going to be much oversight. And it actually seems like it's not only the opposite, but it's like they're they're calculating things before people have even gotten the money uh, that people have already thought about. Like I'm kind of impressed, to be honest with you, that they were able to get their act together as fast as they were. I mean, were you guys surprised by that? By how stringent they were? Did you kind of expect that, Justin? I know you you've talked about that a little bit too. I mean, were you surprised by how they how they were able to to get so many rules together so fast? Um, you know, the SBA is an interesting animal in and of itself. Um, those who've ever dealt with them, they do the best they can. And this one, I mean, they, they threw a lot of money. Just think about it, that they're almost a trillion dollars in lending that is going to take place in about a month's time. That's unbelievable in and of itself. So what I do know is I've sat on a couple of phone calls with, um, as a guest with some of the top bank Tra, tra, uh, credit officers. I've heard some amazing statements from the banks l- challenging the SBA on some of the guidance. You know, the SBA's put some dollars into this to try to figure out how to deal with it. Here's what I can tell you definitively that I heard with my own two ears um, with one of the top uh, treasury officers or credit officers for a regional bank here in the Southeast. The SBA spokesperson clearly stated that, look, we expect to audit the bank. 
at a range of about 70 to 85% of the loans, which you guys will be forgiven. And we will be looking for our guidance to make sure that you're not just forgiven things. You're not just rubber stamping them. And that mm-hmm. I heard a firm, I don't know if it's the same <laughs> one that you were mentioned, mentioning, John, said basically the banks are just going to rubber stamp whatever you put on it and yep. just move it off because no one's collateralized this. I don't see that happening. And I'll tell you why. For a couple of reasons. Number one, we just printed $3 trillion in our, in our ecosystem. If you look at the process here, there's a lot of taxation that the government's going to get back, in my estimation. 60 to 70% of the money they printed back into the Treasury Department, just based on Mm -hmm. my estimation. I may be wrong on my number. I may be high. I may be a little low, but I think they're going to get a significant portion back. One of the things that Chris mentioned, which is why I lean into this, is uh, Section 1106 of the CARES Act basically says that we're not going to have the the interest or the loan taxable to us, right? So whenever we get Mm -hmm. the money and we use it for proper purposes and it's forgiven, it's it's tax-free interest. Income. Well, Section 265 of the Internal Revenue Code actually reads that we can't, that any expenses, quote, allocable to tax exempt income are not deductible. Chris just mentioned this. We were talking about this in our pre show. So now all of a sudden, if you have $100,000 that you've had forgiven, you're not going to be able to deduct that, which means that if you're in a 30% tax rate, get ready for a $30,000 tax bill at year end because the next eight weeks of payroll, utilities, et cetera, are going to, the government's going to pick it back up on us next tax season. So guys, gotcha. I don't see them rubber stamping this. I just don't. I think they're going to hold it tried and true so that they can collect and get back as much of this money possible into the SBA number one and the treasury department number two. Mm. So if you, so you mentioned, and that's great. Cause I think you're, that's, good. that's, a, that's a very good piece of information there to know that we're going to, you know, we're going to get hit somehow with this uh, to recapture some of this back. And it, it makes sense to me. Now you mentioned, you know, just from like a management of this money standpoint, um, putting it in a separate bank account. Mm -hmm. Um, I also heard, you know, making sure that the way that uh, things are being entered in and categorized, journal entries are done a specific way so that you can easily track the amounts that you have essentially left uh, to, to, to go to this. What other ways, what other things can we do to track how this money is being spent. Because I mean, I think about some of us manage everything ourselves with QuickBooks or whatever. Some people have, you know, payroll firms and some have, you know, people paying all the bills for them. You know, what, how should we, what are some common sense things that we should be looking at? Um, uh, Chris, speak to this a little bit as far as how to, how to, as we get this check, right, we go, we open another bank account. What are some of the things we need to be tracking? And is this something that the typical, you know, say dental office is uh, equipped to do without some help? I, I, that's, I think what everybody's wondering is, can I do this myself? Sure. Um, I just got an email for the forgiveness provisions from one, from a bank. Um, and again, you want to keep it as clean as possible. I think that's why you open up, you know, you open up that other bank account because, I was speaking to a a regional bank um, president the other day, and he said that they had such a headache on the underwriting on getting PPP funds that they're going to outsource the forgiveness provision. So that means like a big four firm, Deloitte, KPMG, or someone is going to come through and be signing off to the banks who signed off to the SBA that these monies are true and accurate. So you know that level of compliance just jumped up a bit. And things Mm. that they're looking for are copies of payroll tax reports filed during the eight-week period, Detailed payroll reports for the eight-week period for um, <clears throat> for for the eight-week period, um, showing the hours worked per employee, including vacation, sick, and PTO. Documentation for the health insurance premiums paid. So you'll need your monthly health ins- uh, insurance that you're paying if you have group health for the team. Uh, you have monthly statements to back back up the employer funding. All retirement plan funding for the eight-week period. Um, copies of work papers, schedules, and remittances to the retirement plan should be available. So they may even be looking at adoption agreements on these plans. Um, Hmm. And here's one. One of the things that this whole exercise has really shown me is a lot of practices do the right things. You know, the LLCs will set up operating agreements. The corps will set up bylaws. But a lot of times they never execute them. They'll just get them and go, oh, I got it. Great. And they'll put it in their file or on their Dropbox. They're going to want copies of all lease agreements for real estate and tangible property uh, 
with proof of payment. So you need, if you have a lease, if you have a, 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 a rental entity that you mm-hmm. rent to, make sure you have readily available the lease documents with the execution dates with you as the landlord and the tenant. Um, hmm. Hmm. All this is all from a bank, you said? This is all I'm coming sorry, from a bank. So should we expect to get this kind of list from our bank? Well, you may or may not. What we'll be doing, okay. again, and we'll probably talk about it on our podcast, and Justin and I will be putting this together collaboratively, is a checklist saying, you have your money, now what? Right? And okay. that'll be coming out in the next few days. Okay? Saying, <laughs> get out your manila folders or your Dropbox files and set up folders for your your employee reports, your payroll reports, your lease payments, your health insurance statements, um, interest paid to your to, on your debt. So you what you're going to have to do is get loan histories from all your debt, whether it's your practice loan, your you know your 3D cone beam payment, or or your mortgage, and get the loan history so you can show interest, 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 and that qualifies. And then gotcha. you're saying copies of canceled checks and statements for utilities during the covered period. So, hmm. yeah, it's not easy. Remember, I remember, I think we watched a podcast together and they're like, oh, man, they're going to rubber stand this. The banks want this yeah. off their balance sheet so quickly. Well, here's the key that I think they missed in that statement. The banks want it off their balance sheet so quickly, but they got to have it to a T perfect for SBA not to come back and put it on their balance sheets. Right. Mm-hmm. And make it a make it a bank loan versus SBA funded loan. So that's why the criteria and compliance is going to be that much harder or that much more strict on the backside. And it's good. Just have your, just have your eyes dotted, T's crossed and you should be good to go. I think, you know, once you're listening to this and you're thinking, okay, right. I'm a small business. I run like a practice that's, you know, never really had to deal with anything like this. I remember in the beginning before I got up above five or six employees that I was doing most of my own stuff in house and doing it. Okay. You know, But if when you start dealing with these kind of things, like it's next level stuff. And let me ask you this, at the end of a hard work week that we're going to end up having, let me just tell you, because it's going to be hard because there's going to be a ton of dentistry to do. Are you going to want to hang around for two or three hours and try to figure all this out with your office manager and whoever's doing your payroll and whoever's doing all that. No, I want to go home and I want to podcast. I want to play in my bees and my garden and all that and forget about it. Right. So hire somebody, right. To do it and understand what they're doing. Right. Mm-hmm. John, you're shaking your head. Especially no? with, no, no, I'm saying the same thing. I'm saying, I mean, okay. with all this, if, if this hasn't like gotten you afraid to approach this I'm without scared help, right then now. I think and I hired I think Chris and Justin. <laughs> Because I mean, yeah, we okay. we know these You're guys, okay. right? I know. But, okay. <laughs> but there's been so many changes. I mean, just every time we ch- we turn the corner, there's another wrinkle that gets added to this, and it's not only about filling out all the forms and everything, but it's about reading mm. the guidance that continues to come out and making sure that you're interpreting things properly. Because we're talking about a significant amount of money here that could go one way or the other. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just amazing. I got two questions as we kind of work towards the end of the show here is, one, what shouldn't we do, right? And number two, when the eight weeks runs out, when the eight weeks is up and you still have a said number of uh, how much money you've got ever left in that account, Mm -hmm. what should you do with that money? Justin? So what shouldn't you do? I'm going to tell you right now, don't go out and just start spending the money. Well, I've got payroll. Let me just start buying and paying payroll. There's a lot of rules. There's some technical rules here. For example, we have ACA compliance rules that we have to follow. We have minimum pay that we have to follow. I'm going to tell you that you need to set the money in a separate account delay the use of the money as long as possible. We were talking about some of the some of the CDC guidelines before we ever got into the show. I know you guys are doing podcasts out the wazoo on that particular topic. So there will be a time when you should use the money. There will be. But I would lean heavy on your advisors, heavy on some Excel sheets that we've created, that Chris has created, heavy on some of these checklists on the guidance and and place hold the money back as if this is a hot potato. Because remember, yes, it's a forgivable loan. That's a loan that's on an 18-month term. 
And if you don't utilize this right, not only you're going to get hit with the forgiveness issue on the taxes at year end that we've got to do planning for uh, between now and year. And in fact, Chris and I were talking, man, this is going to be a hectic year for us when it comes to tax planning, just trying to figure out how to prevent a major tax erosion of these dollars. Not only are you going to have that, but you're going to have a pretty sizable loan repayment because it's an 18 month duration, even though it's 1%. It's still a short duration on a sizable amount of money. So I'm going to tell you to set the money back in a side account and try to avoid it at all cost until we have definitive terms, definitive guidance, until the business is completely operational. Still do everything Chris said. Track it, put the right codes in place, bank all your different statements, all those things. Use your lines of credit, use your operating account because you can finagle the dollars around to show where you were using the dollars. But I would hold that money back in a side account as long as possible, pretending it is a hot potato, a rattlesnake, whatever you want to call it, until you get guidance from your advisors on how to use that properly. Chris, do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree that you know you definitely want to have it earmarked and cl- very clearly ascertainable as to what those funds went for. And I mean, it's got to be easy connect the dots, right? And that's things that you know Justin and, and our firm and you know other firms like us out there do. And I just think that you know we're going for the forgiveness portion, which you know an heir is human and forgiveness is divine, and that's what this whole the name of this whole PPP is. It's forgiveness. So you want to make sure you have it blatantly obvious for bank underwriters or their third parties to say, check, 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 we're given. And then if you, uh, John, I believe to your question, if you spend 75% on salaries and wages, if you spend money on rent, if you spend money on utilities, you know, what do you do if you still have money? I would hold it, segregate it. Just like Justin said, wait till the forgiveness calculation is done. If you're hundred percent forgiven, as we'll all be planning on getting our clients to, to ha- realize that um, if then you're golden. You have a little extra money. If you if they say, oh, you have a loan for $9,000, well, you have $9,000 right there to pay back. Because with this money, one for, everybody goes, it's 1%. And I'm like, on an 18-month term. I mean, mm-hmm. 1%, 18-month term on half of a $100,000 notes, three grand a month in debt service, right? So, I mean, you don't want that to hit your cash flow when we're coming back into this new world of dentistry. Um, so, I think that that's definitely what you want to consider and to do. And sit back and wait for idle. I know that's another topic, man. I'm seeing idle loans coming through for dental yeah. practices. Two hundred mm-hmm. grand here, two hundred grand there. You know, uh, twenty five year AMS, or you know, again, they, that's the money that you can spend on the other stuff, the PPE, yeah. getting the UV lights on your AC units, and the, all that's the stuff right. to make sure that your patients are safe. Hold that thought. Hold that thought because that right. is an is another show that we want to have yeah. you guys back for because there is for so sure. much coming and like even if John and I go back to work, right? Like I'm buying a Tesla by the way with my money just so you guys know. John, yeah. I know you've always wanted <laughs> one, one, right? And Chris is going to get me out of it somehow, I'm sure. Get somehow. Me out. Just cuz yeah. no de- no de- no dentists ever make bad spending decisions with money no. that in, right? <laughs> Never. One question. One <laughs> one question. One question before we part, and I'll ask it because we like to ask the questions that our our listeners ask. And um, is can the remainder that you have left over be spent on a severance package? Is there limits on that amount? Justin? You can actually, according to the rules, and I'll read the rules again. This is directly from the law. It's dealing with payroll costs, the salary, wages, commissions, and similar compensations. Then it goes down to allow for dismissal or separation, allowance for dismissal or separation. That's a severance package. Where you're going to run into on that is you can't, you've got to make sure the severance package does not go above the $15,300, I think $75, whatever that number was that Chris mentioned earlier. You still, that's still going to go into that calculation as to not create a lump sum windfall that could annualize out greater than $100,000. So the answer is yes, mm. you can use this as a severance package according to the actual law. And I'm reading you straight from the CARES Act, but you cannot allow that severance package to annualize out greater than $100,000. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm. Okay. That's a good question. That's something I that's, I hadn't heard. And that's, that's good guidance. So I think, you know, once again, uh, I guess I would just say thank you guys for being with us after every waking minute and hour of your day being spent on a lot of these same questions. We really appreciate you guys being here because we've gotten great responses from a lot of our listeners who have have found tremendous value in the information you guys are bringing to the table. And I just can't uh, emphasize as as much about like, if we were, if if you guys had a batting average, if we could like rate all financial 
groups and firms on how they were doing through this, I think you guys would be right there at the top. And, and that's pretty high praise because there's a lot of people that are swinging and missing that have swung and missed on this and you guys have been hitting them out of the park. So much appreciated. Um, we know we'll have you guys back next week, I think, to pick right up where we left off and talk more mm -hmm. about PPP and talk more about what comes next. And I'd like to hear more about the auto loan stuff for sure. If you liked what you heard today, there's a few places you need to go. One is you need to go to financiallysimple.com, check out Justin's stuff. You need to go over to Mayhan and Associates and talk out and check out Chris's stuff. Um, that's where you can find out more about them and what they're doing. Obviously, you know that they know what they're doing. So go check them out and give them some love. Tell them that we sent you. And of course, you're listening to The Dental Guys. Hopefully, you've given us some love as well. If you haven't, head over to Apple Podcasts. Give us a five-star review. That's one of the best ways you can get us out to people. Like, of course, share, subscribe to our YouTube channels or Facebook. This is the way that we get our message out and let people know who we are. We appreciate every single one of you that's listening. The questions you guys are sending in are awesome. Uh, again, providing, helping us provide the value that we want to provide to you guys. So thanks again for everybody watching and for Chris, for Justin, for Wes, I'm John, and we are the Dental Guys.